really loved me. And I knew that when I came home, there was a real bond there. And uh, he may have told me he loved me by saying, slow down, put the seatbelt on. I walked him and said, oh, my dad just told me he loved me. And that's how he would tell me. That's okay. We're all at different stages in life and had our different emotions and different things. And I don't know why, but I didn't walk in his shoes as a boy. I don't know what, what he was doing. But it's important for Gary Thompson to identify himself. Because when I get out, when, when, when my parents do their job and they send me out into the world, and I go to school and, and I uh, go to Bible college and I get out and I get into the world, that's where it's going to count when, when we're going to be facing the unseen world. That's what I'm like. That's not afraid of, but, but I, that's what I respect. I don't, I don't fear them, but I respect them because we don't see them. You know, Billy Graham said that if your eyes could be open, you would see literally if the curtain of eternity could just go by. You would see angels walking. <laughs> Heaven's coming down. Yes, yes. Glory. Glory. Hallelujah. I knew it wasn't going to be quite here. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Glad God's got a sense of humor. Oh, yes. To identify yourself, I look at Isaiah 62, 12. And they shall be, and they shall call them the holy people. We're the holy people. The redeemed of Jehovah. And thou shalt be called sought out, yes. a city of forsaken. Yes. Aren't you glad you were sought out this morning, guys? Yes. Aren't yes. you glad that when your heart stopped, you got somewhere to go? Yes. I'm telling you, even though I know where I'm going, I'm still a little reserved at that last heartbeat because it's the unknown. It's stepping out, man. I'm telling you, it's still, like, I know where I'm going, and I hope there's 10,000 angels taking me. Because oh. I, I worked in a hospital in Mississauga, and I've seen people die without the Lord, and I tell you, I saw the fear. I saw a demon. I didn't see it, but I could imagine demons coming and grabbing that man. That, 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 that Italian man was sitting on the end of the bed, and he was having a heart attack, and he was dying. Just said bye to his family. And he had fear in his eyes. And I remember I had to leave the room because I knew he wasn't saved, and it killed me. Whenever I took a body down from the floor to the morgue, I said, oh, God, this is a created being. I'm creating your image. Where are they today? That's what I think. Where are they today? Are they in heaven with you or are they in hell? They're only one, one or the other. And that, that's where it blows my mind. But I have to have a good identity, who I am in Christ, Amen. in order to yeah. put on the armor of God, in order to fight the enemy. Right. Yeah. We've got to know who we are in Christ and know yeah. to stand up to that Amen. giant in front of you. It doesn't matter, yeah. doesn't matter what your giant is. Right. God's bigger. That's right. yeah. Speak to your giant. Yeah. Speak to your situation yeah. this morning. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Hallelujah. And it, it, it won't run. It's not what's in this place here. It's not what went out the door. It's what comes in the door is more important. Amen. The Bible says things can go out of our body and our temple. If you're if you're, if you're demon possessed and it goes out, guess what? They're coming back to see if you're clean. Yeah. And if you're not clean, they come back seven times greater. Yeah. That's even worse. Who wants those kind of tenants in your soul? Not me. Hallelujah. In Psalms 95, it says, Oh, come, let us sing. Hallelujah. Aren't, that, aren't you glad God's got us singing? Amen. Can you imagine that? He doesn't have us after heaven come and groveling, which he could on glass and broken glass, and come and say, you know, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. But he's made us worthy in the name of Jesus, his son, Amen. through the blood and what he's done in the cross. Hallelujah. 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 He has us come and sing it unto him, unto Jehovah. Let us make a joyful noise unto the Lord. The rock of our salvation. Amen. Let us come before his presence with what? Thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Stop groveling, church. It's time to start thanking God for what you have in your name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, I love you. I'm in the same boat. And sometimes it's hard getting up at whatever time I get up. But it's hard. But I get on. I get out of bed because I because I have two good legs to do it. There's people with no legs. And then I stop complaining. Thank God I have a breath to go to work and I have a good arm to do it. Amen. You know, we're, we are complainers, we really are. We're back in Moses. I don't know how he dealt with it. <laughs> we're like nuts. A bunch of whiners. I tell you. <laughs> with thanksgiving, let us make a joyful noise unto him with songs. For Jehovah is a great God and a great king above all gods, small g. Hallelujah. In his hand are the deep places. This just tells you right now a snapshot of who he is. You ready? Because everything he has is ours. Oh, Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. The heights of the mountains are also his. 
the sea is his. Yeah. And he made it. <laughs> Hallelujah. And in his hands formed the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before Jehovah, our maker, for he is our God. And we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, oh, that we would hear his voice. And this is, my, this is, this is what I believe God wants me to uh, allow you guys to, to have enough grace and, and mercy to allow me. And I thank you for the privilege of giving this word because it's a privilege to break this word into you. It's a true koinonia. It's a true brain. You know? And if God can give me something, a little light of what he wants to say in the scriptures and share it with you guys as brothers, thank God it's a privilege. Thank you, Lord, for my brothers and sisters before me. And all this here is preparation because when you find yourself knowing who he is, knowing who you are, and you're brought into his very presence, something happens to us, guys. We become more like him. Something happens to our thinking. You know, all of a sudden we're not holy anymore. We start to realize we're king's kids. He doesn't only own the cattle on the hill. He owns the hill. Hallelujah. Everything. In the name of Jesus. Okay. The next, the next part I like the next uh, part I like to uh, just talk to you about was uh, the second one. First one was Lord. Second one was preparation. It's important to, pre to prepare ourselves. And you know what? There's only one way to do that. And, there's, and I don't have a watch on me, but the bottom line is to prepare. There's no, there's no shortcut with that. You know what? It hurts to spend time with you. It does. How many people here have honestly tried to spend, you know, what, half hour? You say half hour, you end up falling asleep. Amen. Some honest people here. Hallelujah. You know, but preparation is so, so part of the definition of that is properly expected, organized, equipped, and ready. And I think of when you guys have company over and you have company coming in and you're so so happy at what they you're so you're so thrilled with yourself. You're making that beautiful toss salad. You're preparing that salad for the company. That's a big thing, huge, huge thing. 